good afternoon I almost want to say good evening because it's getting dark unbelievable it is definitely going into winter and I'm going to show you how to cook a really nice warming dish tonight out of almost all of these fresh grains from my garden and the Kuirup and the Pakenham community gardens and some from uh, Max's garden who's the community garden coordinator in Pakenham. So the dish is called, uh, Shohili was originally going to do this uh, session but she uh, she's not uh, not well enough to do it so I asked well I can jump in, jump in, I need to cook anyhow so I might as well. And I had all these grains and I thought, yeah, that's a great opportunity to demonstrate how delicious um, you can cook with a mountain of grain. Because I, I know from my uh, clinical practice that people struggle with, uh, with that. So we're going to turn it into something called palak paneer. And paneer is a um, Indian cheese that are hunted down uh, in Pakenham. It's not that easy to come by, would you believe it? Um, and I found it in, I think it's called Smiles uh, and uh, Spices and Smiles or something in John Street. Um, and they have that uh, there. So it has, it's basically like a, um, a really young cheese, has got no flavor. And I have actually made palak paneer. Uh, if you don't like to use dairy, you can uh, make it with a firm tofu. It tastes just as nice. Um, and works really really well in this recipe so you can leave that plain because the sauce we are creating that contains the palak which is spinach uh, but I just use any other grains that I that I have because that's what I do and um, then uh, or you can fry it off a little bit which uh, which I will do because I can and it tastes just that little bit uh, more aromatic so the first thing you do with most Indian dishes is you temper spices and um, I said in the post that I did regarding this uh, this dish it doesn't really matter so much which spices you have so use what you have so I'm putting in about a teaspoon of cumin seeds and um, about a teaspoon of mustard seeds any mustard seeds will work um, they are larger ones, smaller ones, yellow ones, blackish ones, brownish ones. Um, I'm not so much of a specialist. I'll just use uh, any which ones. And here I've got homegrown fennel seeds because my fennel goes into flower really fast. So I've got lots of fennel seeds. So in there you go. And I'm actually going to do this in the thermomix because everything needs um, pureeing afterwards. And that just simplifies the process. But you can just temper your spices in your fry pan as uh, as well that is not a problem at all so I'll close this and um, for this purpose because we want to have a bit of oof behind it I use the highest heat possible uh, in the thermal mix and um, give it about uh, oh, a two minute um, a two minute whirl uh, to temper those uh, those spices so while this is um, doing its thing I've got two other spices here um, that are very Indian. So that is, this one is methi or uh, also called um, fenugreek. And I've actually got fenugreek leaves as well, which are quite nice uh, in, um, in there. So I have burnt this before, so I, I'm always careful with not putting this in too soon. And I've got beautiful nigella seeds as well. Uh, I love using nigella, uh, nigella seeds. They've got really good evidence on uh, helping with blood glucose balancing and as well as normalizing blood lipids. So for, for those of us with um, higher cholesterol levels. So they go in sort of towards the, uh, towards the end. And in the way of tempering spices, the brown spices are put in last so as to not uh, burn them and I'll be just using a bit of garam masala and turmeric turmeric which is almost like a cure cure all so I'm uh, with the thermomix you can see that uh, the uh, temperature gauge so mine is already up to up to heat and so it's it's been going for a minute a bit more than a minute um, and I'll let that go for a uh, for another minute and I'll turn on my rice 
So I, this afternoon or early afternoon, I have soaked some brown basmati rice. And um, the reason why you can do this, you don't have to, um, but there's good evidence that that denatures something called phytic acid. And phytic acid in the grain can hold on to minerals. So soaking this in water with a bit of acid, I just chucked in a little bit of very sour kombucha, not too much, otherwise <laughs> the rice will taste sour. Um, and I also put in a bit of olive juice uh, from pickling or brining olives for some, uh, for some salt flavor. Because I'm so frugal, I'm even saving on salt. Crazy, eh? Um, so this just goes on. Uh, the ratio is one cup of rice to two cups of liquid. Uh, and this is called the evaporation method. Um, which is what I've been taught ages and ages ago and I'm still doing that and you know this way again you're not throwing everything uh, anything away um, and the brown rice needs a bit longer than ordinary rice so 25 minutes it should be it should be good so now that my spice has definitely gotten some aroma going i can smell this i'm going to put in about half a teaspoon of the fenugreek seeds and fenugreek also has cholesterol lowering and blood glucose balancing properties so i'm having a, a, a double whammy of food as medicine uh, in our in our dinner tonight so while while this is also heating before i put my powdered spices in i've got half a uh, an onion left from Yesterday's uh, yesterday's dinner. What did we have? I made um, lovely chicken uh, chicken drumsticks in the oven with potatoes. Very classic potato, onion, pumpkin was yum. So because I blitz this in the thermal mix, I don't need to do much chopping of my uh, of my onion. I'm also putting in two garlic cloves, and I don't need to chop them at all. I just peel them. Oh, hi Mel. Great using those veggies. Yeah, isn't it a mountain of them? I once did a cooking class um, in the main shed um, and I did my, what do I call it, anti-stroke frittata and I had a sink full of green, uh, green leaves there and they looked at me, you're not going to put all this in our frittata. I said, yeah. And they thought, no, ain't gonna eat it. But they did. They really enjoy, enjoyed it. It's amazing how uh, green leafy veggies cooked together and uh, with a bit of skill and spices they don't taste half bad I reckon but everybody's flavor flavor buds is different peeling my garlic and I've also got a little bit of a uh, little bit of ginger ginger here I'm never too uh, too thorough with peeling it I just kind of take the the very dry parts um, and hard parts off and that's it. Hi Elisa! Should keep an onion cut in the fridge. Yeah, there's these, this is a friend of mine asking whether you know you shouldn't keep onions in the fridge and there is some onions have got a pulling uh, ability so this is why you put them on um, boils or you can put them on mozzy bites, bee stings to um, pull out the um, the venom and the the in infection, but um, I think that's a bit of a, a bit of a tail thing that anything happens to the onion while it's in the um, uh, it's in the fridge. We keep onion in the fridge sometimes. Usually I use it all, and I don't keep it. This one was just kept outside um, uh, all all of today. Nothing much happened. So I put about a teaspoon of turmeric. And a teaspoon of my garam masala in uh, in there, and let that temper a bit. Oh, it smells good. And next thing, I'll put in some um, coconut oil, and also, and you hear you hear that sizzle. Um, and I'll put in uh, a generous knob of butter, probably something like. 40, 40 grams. Um, I haven't written a recipe for this. Um, I may write the may write the recipe a bit um, a bit later. So in goes my onion, 
my rice is cooking and I've just turned this down. Um, I've got the onion, the garlic in, uh, in there. Put my knob of ginger and when I've got the other bit of ginger, this one here has suffered a bit more, it's a bit, bit drier. So I'll generously cut the dry parts away because that doesn't taste nice. Even if you pure, pure it, it'll stay fibrous and hard and you don't want that. There has to be balance. So, very good. So now I'll just give it a quick blitz. And let that uh, let that fry uh, fry away. While that is happening, I'm, I've got some older tomatoes um, from a late harvest. Some are from Max as well, um, and I'll just tidy them up a little bit, chop them. You always put in a bit of tomato. All the recipes that I've read about palak paneer, they ask for a bit of tomato tomato puree. And there seems to be a lot of variation in the uh, in the recipes, so I don't have much tomato. I'll just use what I what I have here. So these these are the tomatoes tidied up. I also want to put in a bit of heat, not too much. I don't like palak paneer too hot, and so I've got these lo these lovely little yellow chilies from the Pakenham Community Garden. They go in with the onion, garlic, and ginger, and all this is. You may be able to hear it. It sizzles. Uh, it sizzles. Uh, it sizzles a bit in there. So I also turned on, on my fry pan and put some more coconut oil in uh, in there to fry my paneer. In it goes. And. With coconut oil, you don't want to put too much heat on the, under. I find it burns uh, it burns stuff quite uh, quite readily. Here's my paneer. I usually just cut it uh, half wise, and then you can just pull them out like so. Put them on top of each other. Sometimes there's a bit of liquid. You can go in my compost bin, and then you just cut it halfway one more time. I like larger cubes in there and then you just put them in in your heating oil and you can put on some spices but as you just saw we put a whole lot of heap a whole heap of spices in the sauce so um, you don't need to oops I need to wait for my coconut oil to melt. Before I put this in, but I will dust it with a bit of turmeric because it just looks pretty, and you know the eye wants to enjoy that as well. So all my stuff is nicely frying in there. So I'm adding in my tomatoes. They can happily fry fry away, and now I add all those grains. So I have got parsley. And that has some pretty thick stems, so I'll put this in first to give it some time to, to make sure it softens in the cook. But never fear, it will all be blitzed up and pureed, so there will be no hard bits left um, after, it's all, after it's all cooked. And it goes, and you'll be amazed how much, actually, I can't see that many. Well, you you get an idea of how much. I mean, you saw the dish rack full of stuff. Uh, you get an idea <laughs> how many grains will actually go into that paneer sauce. Has anyone had palak um, paneer before? Um, it's a quite a famous takeaway dish. Okay, so my greens, parsley. Remember, parsley really good for times where when women are quite estrogenic and moody or in pain, inflamed in their period or PMSy. 
Uh, it's a great estrogen modulator, the apigenin in, in, uh, in parsley. And my coconut oil is nearly melted. While I wait for that, I chop up this most amazing silver bean. Look at it. And so this time I use stems and leaves. Um, something that you may not know about silver bead stems, and I sometimes see people discarding the stems, um, and I'm a bit uh, I'm a bit shocked because they are rich in minerals. For uh, for their ability to stand up, they need minerals to have uh, so that they're not as floppy as the uh, as the leaves. And if you not eat them, you are actually throwing away beautiful, beautiful minerals for bone maintenance, for bone building, for nerve firing, all these essential processes. Very good. I mean the green is awesome as well, that has the chlorophyll. You want what I'm saying is use all the parts if you if you somehow can. So and the same goes for the stems of the parsley too. Rice is bubbling oil is heating, thermomix is cooking, looking good, good, so I've got all my spices in there, yes I haven't forgotten anything, beautiful, there's all this, look at that, I have minimized the contents of this thing, Considerably. So, in my fry pan, I also put in two bay leaves because I've got access to a bay tree. So I've got lots and lots and lots and lots of bay leaves, and it tastes nice. And I can't really do it, do it in the palak. Uh, sorry, in the paneer. No, in the palak sauce because. I want to blitz this up after and that will certainly stay fibrous. I, I don't know whether you've ever tried to puree uh, bay leaves. Uh, I don't think even the Thermomix would choose for it. So what I'll do with these, I'm not quite sure what they are, whether it's like a bok choy or a pak choy or sum choy, it's some sort of Asian, uh, Asian green and I'm going to cut the stems out of that one. Because what I want to do, I love these stems, and tomorrow I'll be making a, a different veggie prep out of them, like a creamy, cheesy sauce. And I just gently simmer them in there for a minute so that they soften. They taste so delicious because by themselves they are not not really so amazing. <laughs> Although they have a lovely uh, they have a lovely crunch. Still putting greens into my into my dish here. So all I'm doing is doing a V cut to take my stem out and keep that for another dish tomorrow. So you may hear my lovely paneer frying. Still loading the thermal mix up. More greens and more greens. Still more greens. Yes, yeah, so why are we? What's another reason? Does anyone know why we might want to eat uh, loads and loads of those greens? There's really good evidence that they help with weight loss because there's a whole lot of volume entering your body and water and that keeps you full no calories awesome stuff but the other two reasons is anyone no the other two reasons why greens are fantastic is magnesium in our stressful environment you cannot have enough magnesium and chlorophyll and actually there's another one that is really important especially for pregnant ladies which is your folate I'm going to dust my lovely, lovely, lovely 
and here dyes just with a little bit of um, turmeric and a bit of salt and uh, salt and chili. That'll do it. So I get even browning. Very good. So all my greens are in. My tomato is in. Now I'm adding a bit of coconut sauce. I give the coconut tin here a lovely shake to get all the solids, solids out of there. And I just let it sit on top of the thermomix so the steam that goes up will kind of melt the remaining coconut out of the uh, out of the can, so I get a really nice um, nice empty empty can that I hardly need to need to dishwash. Very good. Rice is still bubbling. I'm just showing you the lovely browning that is occurring on your on my paneer. There you go. That's all you need. It doesn't need to need to get any much much color. It's really just for a bit of aroma and, and prettiness you're doing this you're doing this for. Good. So the only thing that is missing in my sauce is a bit of salt. So I'm going to add a bit of whoop, my can was hot. I'm going to add a bit of sea salt. About two of those, and put my lid on. So in uh, in other recipes I've seen, uh, because I looked at a few recipes, I've, I've never really uh, used a recipe for it, but I just thought I better make sure that I'm not doing something, um, you know, completely and utterly unorthodox. <laughs> So it calls for the veggies to be blanched and then chilled. And what that does is it, it retains the green color. So I don't worry about that too much. Um, I'll just put it all in the one pot, nice and easy. And um, then, yeah, it, the, the green is not as vibrant as when you blanch it and chill it in ice water. But it's just a step that I leave out because I like to keep things simple. So what I'll do now is I'm going to uh, whisk the, uh, the sauce up. veggies don't really need much uh, need much cooking and I just want to taste the uh, taste the flavor so this is what we've got so it's a bit bitsy still I may just cook it a little bit and then give it another uh, another whirl I just want to taste it mm. Ooh. actually it doesn't need anything so it has a bit of a bite from the chili, not too much. It has lovely aroma from the curry spices. And I think there is uh, really enough salt. Actually, I may add just a little bit of salt because the um, paneer it has got no, no added salt, but really doesn't need much. So I just keep it bubbling for another five minutes or so. And yeah, then we have our beautiful palak paneer. Um, the sauce can be reheated. I've never frozen it, so I can't tell you what it's like. I, I don't think I would freeze it. Um, certainly not the cheese, cheese either. So it's best to uh, to be eaten in the ne uh, in the next day or the day after. So it should last for uh, for at least three days without any uh, without any problem. You can also serve it uh, other than with basmati rice. Um, or brown basmati rice or brown rice. You could use uh, quinoa. That would be nice with uh, with it. Or even with potatoes would be really really yummy. 
Um, yeah. Are there any? Oh, Mel, yes. You just feel better when you're eating greens. I know. Um, it is pretty, uh, it is a, if you ask me, any grain food is a super food. Um, because of the benefits that I've mentioned, uh, that I've mentioned early, earlier. And what I really, really love is the fact that you, you grow them so easily. I mean, how difficult is it to grow a bit of parsley and silver beet? And that's like, you know, a health insurance. Okay, in that light, I will see you again um, on Friday. I'll be baking cake with you uh, for something complete novel. Ash inspired me on Monday with her uh, raw slice that she made. So I'll be making an orange almond thyme cake. Wait for it. And we have... And we will have um, Luke tomorrow with some awesome, awesome meat, uh, meat dishes and ideas. I wish you a lovely Wednesday night. Stay chirpy. Till then, bye.